And I am an only Scott here today with Doug from Doug Fest. Yo, what's up? How's it going, bro? Good, yourself? Thanks for coming to Auckland, man. Good, man. What do you mean? From the Rotorua. For some reason, I thought you were from the Tron, but... Yeah, well, I do everything in the Tron, so... Everything in the Tron. <laughs> yeah. Rotorua's got nothing to do. No music scene, nothing, so... Would you call yourself a local celebrity now? Fuck no. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> After being on the project or the mainstream oh, no, media fuck coverage. Fuck that. I mean, I got noticed once afterwards. And yes. I was, was, bit, was like, <laughs> who the fuck are you? Man, from people who watch the project? I think so. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. That's not something I want no, to associate. No. <laughs> Just a middle-aged woman is yeah, fine. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, though. But I saw some photos of the event. It looked like it fucking went off, man. It was man. so good. We Did had, it sell out? Uh, we sold out on Saturday. Fucking... We had about 160 people turn up. Yo. On Friday, it was about 130. Not not as big, but... Bro, if anything, in my opinion, over 50 for a local gig yeah. is success. It, fuck yeah, it was. <laughs> That's awesome. Fuck yeah. So yeah. it's the first time you've ever organized anything like that before? Yeah, by myself. Yeah, yeah. So it's the first one I've done by myself. Yeah. I helped out with um, Bridge City Beatdown two years ago, but it was more like the back side of things, like taking photos running around doing errands and shit, but nothing mm. as big as this. Yeah. Yeah. True. What was the what was the most difficult part? I mean, I've organized a few gigs myself. Yeah. Dealing with musicians can be painful. Yep. What uh what, what was what was the thing that you were a part of the organizer organizing part was a bit of a oh, pain God. in the ass. Probably trying to figure out what kind of gear we needed. What kind uh, of amps yeah. and stuff. Like some mm. people brought amps, some people didn't and we used one a band's amps for one day and then we swapped everything around the next day. We just had amps out the back just sitting there waiting for nothing, so... <laughs> eh. Everyone's still using amps? I thought everyone was on the laptops, you know? Oh, we had some of them there as well. <laughs> oh, yeah? Using laptops. It's always funny, like, at gigs and you, like... Because quite a few bands now, and probably not at the Doug Fest, I'd imagine, but they'll, they don't have a bass player. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's quite common for a band to just, you know, have, like, a backing... Which I think can be a little bit naff, but that's yeah. just my personal opinion. But, um, but if the computer goes... If it goes wrong... <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, like that's the, that's like, the show's gone yeah pretty much yeah. it's a uh, it's a bit odd um and even and recently as well i've seen a few bands which i also find strange is when you have two guitarists on stage and a, like a drummer yeah. and then they rely a lot on backing tracks but then they have like backing tracks of guitars oh yeah yeah i don't think we had any of that no I, well i hope not i don't know what Oh, it's, it's all good. Uh, this is just me being like an opinionated bastard. Yeah. But it's just like when I watch that, I just find that I find it a bit odd. Yeah. Because like, yeah, I guess on the backing track thing, if you do like synths or if you do like yeah. some cool stuff, but if it's like guitars and stuff, I'm like, but you guys have guitarists. Anyway, yeah. but the the gig, great success. You're going to do much. it again next year? Fuck yeah, we are. Fucking cool, dude. Fuck yeah. We've got, we got um, some more plans as well for doing some smaller satellite gigs up in like Auckland, maybe Wellington or something, Doug Fist Juniors. Building an empire, bro. Oh, Let's no. go. <laughs> maybe. We'll see what happens. That's cool. That's exciting though. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess you maybe you prove to yourself as well that you can do something like this. And um, Yeah. You know, in the local music scene, it's... You know, as we all kind of know, it's it's, just, it's quite hard to also like getting gigs and, you know, I think more venues are being shut down. I mean, I've had a few more open up. Yeah. I mean, another one in Auckland, the uh, big fan opened up, yeah. which um, I went to last night, which was really, I've been to a couple of times. It's yeah. really cool. Um, but I don't know about Hamilton. I don't know about Rotorua. What's the venue in Rotorua that most we local have, bands play? Maybe 13th level, but that's maybe a capacity of 50 mm. at most. Um, there's another one that's sort of just opened up. It used to be a, a just a straight up bar, mm. and it's called Crates and Cues. It's got a new owner now, new stage, new everything, and they're looking for bands to come play there. And they just I don't think there's any venue fees. Maybe maybe fifty bucks at most, but mm. yeah, it's that's nice. Yeah, yeah. There was a venue in Auckland, um, Backbeat Bar. I don't know if they still go. It was above the Rock Shop. Oh yeah, yeah, and they used to do quite a lot of gigs there, and they're really good in terms of like I think the venue hire fee wasn't much yeah. and they just rely on you just obviously you know, like they take the bar fees and yeah. do all that which is cool um so yeah but i there was another one as well but it was like three higher on weekdays like you can i think it was oh i can't i played a gig there i did one gig there on like a thursday and I was yeah like, this is great um but yeah i think to be a local venue it's hard work yeah it's it definitely hard. is yeah i mean and you're relying on these local bands to try and bring in and just unfortunately we are quite small in new zealand yeah it's tough especially like rock punk metal yeah i think can be a little bit difficult um and also us kiwis aren't the most enthusiastic so yeah there's also that <laughs> i mean last places started 2021 so it's quite mm. a new ish venue like yeah it looked good yeah it's a great venue it looks it's like really a... long as well and it's really mm. like tight by the stage so it funnels everyone to the stage and it's 
It's really, it's quite nice. It's quite a good venue. How many bands do you have? 12, eh? 12? Uh, I had 12 and a half. 12 and a half. What's 12. a half band? Uh, so the, our MCs, Thief and Zard, Komodo and Thief of Baghdad, um, they did a little set at the end of each night. It was just mm. a little rap duo. Oh, about fun. 15 minutes. And they minutes. did like the in-between the bands and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, that's such a good idea it's doing so, that. Oh, that's the, Having MCs in between. so good. It's it kept good the, idea. It kept the energy and the yeah. hype up for everyone. It was great. Yeah. That's fucking smart. Yeah. Good idea. People selling merch and did all that stuff. For the yeah, so we as had well. so every band that came had some merch to sell, or if they had any merch, and we mm. just sold it off for them and transferred them the money. And yeah, good on you, man. That's good to hear. Yeah. Like, it uh, makes me makes me my my heart warm <laughs> hearing stuff like that because I think, yeah, I mean, even like when I was in a band, I used to be in a metal band, play for years, and we gigged and did all that stuff, yeah. and I just. I think just trying to organize other bands and then trying to get things going it just yeah. get a bit tricky. But yeah, like there wasn't too many people organizing gigs. Yeah. It's probably about like, fuck, eight, well, seven, eight years ago. Oh, shit. In Auckland. <laughs> um, but I think the scene's kind of, it's definitely had a resurgence yeah. in the last couple of years, which yeah. is really good. Especially over the last year as well. Like I went to last year, I think maybe 50 gigs and there were, it was a decent crowd in each one of them. And then this year, mm. 65 and it's still getting bigger. Fuck yeah. So, yeah. You had a lot of gigs, goddamn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I only go to about... I try and go to most of my boys in the Caridi, and I try and go to them when yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, and a few other uh, rock bands. I haven't seen uh, Boondocks yet. I want. Oh, I, I, got, I, got, I got to go watch them at you some point. You yeah, have to. You have to. You really had them on, this, on the podcast. You I know. see them. Come on. I know. I have to. <laughs> They've done real well for how new they are. Yeah. Very impressed. Yeah. But it's, like you said, I think... You reckon it's the post-COVID? Do you reckon yeah, it's definitely the, post-COVID, It, it yeah. must be post-COVID, because shows... Yeah, I guess beforehand it was like, oh, yeah, but now I think everyone's like, yeah, like, this can be taken away from us, yeah. like, before. And we had a lot of internationals back then as well, now we just mm. get, well, now we have heaps more, but back, mm. like, last year, we just dropped feed to us and kind of wanted to do something on our weekends, so let's just go play. Mm. So how did you get into, uh, you play music yourself? No. You playing bands and nothing no. like that? No. What kind of, <laughs> um, so you obviously, you love going to gigs. Yeah. So you've always just been a big music lover, kind uh, of for as long as you can remember. Yeah, my or? dad, my dad uh, was really into punk back in the day as well. So we went to heaps of gigs on K Road and got me into everything. And then, cool dad, fuck yeah. <laughs> so he's got all like the special shirts and the AK seventy nine shirts and everything else like that. It's mean as. So he took me to uh, this place called Yellow Submarine in Hamilton back in two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. All ages gig underground underneath tracks, which was a music store, and there was just hardcore punk shows, proper punk shows. Mm. And, I think I saw 48 May down there as well. When oh, I was wow. Yeah, starting yeah, out, which yeah, is yeah. Mean as. And then from there, just like, oh, I kind of like music. So just dabbled around with like uh, Fruity Loops back in the day, FL mm. Studio. Yeah, yeah. Fruity Loops 3. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I used to dabble on it. I, I, I never quite understood it. I made like, I think a few beats. And yeah. I was like, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, he's not very good. No, but... same. <laughs> but then it kind of just grew. So then mm. I kind of just self-taught everything myself and then, Next thing you know, I'm mastering and mixing tracks for big name uh, EDM artists. So the guys awesome. like Rabbits, um, Wooly, also the Yo Mace was one of the big ones as well. And then I did all that with Monster Cat for all, from the ages of 18 to 21. And then fell out of music again. And now it's only just started back in the last two years. Mm. So you did, you actually, yeah, so you, okay. So I didn't know that. So you got a bit... Uh, producing experience yeah on. what did you what did you what were you mainly using like pro tools logic ableton uh, ableton mostly yeah ableton it's just mainly mixing for the edm the mastering. Yeah. For the edm stuff yeah. yeah mixing edm that's quite an art form because yeah. well, i'm coming myself more from like the rock stuff but i have done a bit of yeah. edm production and what i found to be quite different was again this is my opinion <laughs> as i found writing the music to be there it depends like if it's like drum and bass or maybe house or something yeah. Um, the actual music is generally very simple, yeah. But the art is in the mixing, yeah. That's actually where the art is. Well, um, some of the some of the art just did their own mixing, and I just glossed over it, polished it up a little bit. It wasn't mm. too much work, which no? is really good for me. But there's some bands I needed a bit more time with, or some mm. bands artists. Because I I think the like. When I get when I listen to like presets on a lot of these new programs, especially like Omnisphere and yeah. shit like that, they're fucking insane. Mm. I like hear it, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But yeah. I remember when I first got Logic and I got like you their synths, and I was like, man, I'm gonna have to spend ages oh, like yeah. editing the sound and trying to make yeah. it sound at least semi decent. <laughs> um, whereas I think from what I know now is like a lot of there's so many good plugins that yeah. just have great sounds. You can just 
get going with. Yeah. Well, there's, I see there's this new playground. I don't know what it's called, but you can like just put a sound in it and then it uses AI to recreate that sound and it has different sort of effects. Oh, so you cool. just like click on it, it goes mm. just like a bit more reverb or a bit more, it sounds a bit weird or something like that. It's really good. Me. But, yeah. I, um, I've had a little play around recently of getting back into synths. I've been doing a bit of more songwriting. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I definitely, but my computer can't handle it. <laughs> Same. You got to, yeah, that's the thing with like, even the atmosphere, it's like, fuck, you got to have like a big, um, big RAM, yeah. big memory for all that shit. Yeah. But yeah, what's your, what's your favorite, like, um, EDM? Do you still listen to a bit of EDM at the moment? Not or really. Not no, much anymore? Not much. I mean, I used did to. You, did you get kind of over it doing the, that yeah, it was, yeah, I can imagine. It's pretty much daily all the time. So listening to the same stuff. It's like, it's kind of a mm. bit, yeah. So what was the genre? What EDM is such a huge umbrella. Are yeah. we, what are we mainly talking about? Uh, it was yeah. a bit of like that bro step type of stuff. Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Are we talking like Flux Pavilion kind of oh, type yeah. stuff? Oh, Damn. yeah. Was... I was listening to them the other day. I was talking with a mate and we were kind of going over stuff from um, like the late 2000s, early 2010s, especially the EDM. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> so I, don't know if this is, I don't know if this has aged well at all, especially like... Uh, that one song cracked me up. It was Bass Cannon by Flux oh, Pavilion. Yep. I'm like, yep. what a song. It was so good back in the day, though. Well, the production was amazing because yeah. it was like, I've never heard anything like this. Yeah. You know? And then now it's like, oh. oh <laughs> yeah. this is, this isn't, it's like too... There's a time period, I think, where things were too polished. Yeah. Where, like, in a way, with time, it just sounds a bit shit. Yeah. Like, uh, even having a metal as well, like um, the Rise... I've talked about it before, the Rise Record stuff, if you remember oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, just too polished. Yeah. Like, guitars, like, vocals were too auto-tuned, everything too pitch-corrected, yeah. dr- drum triggers, like, no real drums. Um, like, just too much. Whereas yeah. I think now... I find it interesting with, like, I guess, like, TikTok and that kind of brings back a lot more like some of the music i've heard i'm like oh this feels a little bit rougher in some like a little bit rougher around the edges again which is nice yeah i think there's been a bit of a maybe it's my imagination but i don't know it just feels like there's a bit of like pushback against the overproduction which was just fucking crap it sounds more raw that's the best way to describe it yeah 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 i just think like i look back on like uh what was a lot of those dance like edm big edm pop dance songs that came out in like the 2010s and just so overproduced super and i fucking didn't like it at all but i'm like there's been a bit of like pushback because i listen to pop music now if it's like olivia rodrigo or stuff like that i'm like i mean yeah i mean that obviously taps into a little bit of like the 2000s and stuff of that but it's a little bit rawer yeah it doesn't sound as like over polished and sounds like people are kind of being like oh music's meant to sound human like not completely robotic yeah it's the same thing with like peach prc because i saw her live last year Mm. and it was like her recordings are great her live is 1000 times better mm. it's just like why can't you just do more of that like raw vocals instead of like auto tuning and synthesizing them all and, yeah. i think that got i think that's been a bit lost i think during the time period another production thing i remember in the in the 2000s was the loudness wars yeah like, oh, yeah. like metallica won that one i think with oh, that think album so. the Tet death magnetic album just yes. fucking <laughs> just brick wall the whole fucking thing <laughs> yeah, just, let's just have the waveform looking like a fucking solid piece of like a solid rectangle yeah. the whole way. loud is good <laughs> yeah um and i think with that i think just like digital was like oh well how it's almost like, like how not polished but how i don't know how would i describe it it's like how how like like can we make everything sound as good as possible yeah. to such a point where it's like you're taking it's like there's no there can't be any mistakes everything needs to be fully gridded and then you kind of end up taking away like the part of the music the human part of it yeah. which is the whole reason people connect with it yeah. <laughs> but yeah. apart from edm I, you could do that with edm but yeah probably not like metal did it like i said but um anyway fuck i'm rambling on <laughs> um so what do you uh apart from music and that like what what else are you are you doing are you sort of involved in events man no, you don't do events or anything like nah, that what, nah. what, what else uh, what's what's your day job my day job so i'm a mechanics parts career uh, with um dangerous goods as well so i usually transport batteries around to different mechanics crc things everything cv joints oh, and at cool. the sometimes i also deliver flowers Okay. Which is, yeah, two different things in the case. You've got like a, a drive shaft there and a flowers over there. You just hope they don't touch each other. <laughs> right, right. So do you, you, you do you work on anything, like work on the cars or do anything no, like that? Or? No, I mean, I used to race Speedway, but that's the only sort of like oh, cool. car stuff. What did you race? I used to race mini socks and then production saloons. Production so. saloons. What is, uh, I'm not that good with cars, okay. so. <laughs> so production saloons is like your normal everyday JDM car. So I had mm. an Integra Type R 1996 Bug Eye, which is 
if I kept it on the road, it'd be worth heaps of money, but I didn't. <laughs> so it's just basically your normal car, mm. strip everything out of it, take, put it on dirt, turn left. Fuck. Yep. And you get to about 120 Ks on dirt, which is fun. Whew. That is fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is fun. No crashes or anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Heaps of that. I mean, I've got <laughs> screws in my wrist. I've rolled my car three times. My dad took my car. What's out. it like rolling a car? It's fun. <laughs> it's fun I want to do it again yeah oh I guess it's kitted out like a roll cage oh, and yeah, all that yeah. shit and uh, you're all like prepared yeah because yeah. every time I see it on the track I had some mates who still they do um, BMW um, E30s and that and I'd see oh, yeah, them yeah. do it and um, they didn't roll but they'd tell me stories about guys who do it I'm like yeah. oh man that scares the shit out of me but I guess if you've got all the gear it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, fine it's all good. you just need to rebuild it again next week it's fine <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money though uh, yeah yeah, that's why I stopped. That's why you stopped? Yeah. Yeah, it's a common... I've, I've heard that a few times from yeah. a few people. It's, I mean, I did it for... Well, I mean, my parents bought my first car, which is great, mm. when I was 12. So mm. I started racing from 12 to 16 in a mini stock, which was like an 80 horsepower Datsun 120Y engine and a very small, compact, steel, purpose-built race car that weighs about 600 Ks. And that was... True. Yeah. So, so you, have, you did it from like the year, like 18 to like... Uh, so I did it from 12 to 16 in mini oh, okay. stocks and then... I took one year off to do demolition derbies and then 17. Did you do demolition derbies? Oh, yeah. Bro, that's fucking cool, man. Yeah. Do you have any videos of it? Probably somewhere. Oh, dude, that's fucking <laughs> awesome. What was it like doing a demolition derby? That was fun. That was... I haven't been to one in years. Because they have like the, the Western Springs, they, they yeah. do a bit there. I'm like, fuck, that's fun. That's so much fun. Like, I think one time at Rotorua, they didn't water the track enough. So we were getting about, I saw my speed, was still connected, about 90Ks in a Honda EK Civic, which I should have kept <laughs> on the road as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was quite fun. Just crashing into people, having fun, having a laugh. Because how do you win? I can't remember. Is it just like the last man yeah, standing, last, last right? Man standing, just yeah. whose car just can't fucking go anymore, yeah. right? It's but essentially it's boring because then they don't hit anyone. Mm. I'm, not, I'm there to have fun. Yeah, I just always assume like um yeah you just it, people would put on like um I remember I think I went to one where some dude put like the like the those like digger. What's oh, that called? Yeah. I don't know what they're called. They they, they like they have you pushing stuff out the out the way. Oh, the little. That stuff. I, I, don't, I don't know what it's called yeah. technically, but this guy had put on his car and just like cleaned people up. And I'm like, as a kid, I was like, that stuff looks like the funnest it's, shit. It was so much fun. I would love to do it again, but it's just trying to find time now. Mm. Constant What's the training like for doing a demolition derby? Is it you just go and do it? You're yeah. just like, oh, here's my car. I'm just going to sign up and fucking there yeah. we go. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I for yeah. some reason thought, I don't know, there was like something else involved. <laughs> you get, you can get anyone. Like I think one time I was racing to get some 70-year-old, 80-year-old person who was having just one of his old cars that he got yeah. out of his backyard and just having some fun with it. That is fun as fuck. Just, oh, that's so good. Well, so could, could you like at the end, do you get like, if your car is completely fucked, you just got to get it like, you know, take it to get scrapped or whatever. Yeah, does that, you, does... you can, but you can just leave it there and then they take it to get scrapped and yeah. That's, I think a, that's a fun way to scrap a car. Exactly. It's only cost 25 bucks plus the car. That's not bad. It isn't bad. No. I've got to think about that with my with my um, my wing road at some point. <laughs> Go on. Wing roads are great. I mean, my first car was a Nissan Sentra wagon, which was like, oh, yeah. looked like a limousine. And that <laughs> came third, I think, or fourth or something like that, which is decent. Yeah. Is, that, is that on dirt, dirt road? Or? Yeah, dirt. Oh, yeah. dirt road as well. Same, yeah. same thing as the speedway. Like, yep. Just dirt, turning left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the speedway is just you're literally. It's like um, Nat, is it like NASCAR? Like yeah, like NASCAR, but I'm yeah. dirt. Yeah, sweet. Oh yeah. So, yeah. how many, how many like drivers normally are you against? In uh, so in production sleeves, it was around about. Uh, I think the most was twenty five, but about ten would be your average. Do you end up going around a corner with like five other cars like going oh, around the corner? Not and five. Shit? I mean, <laughs> the most I've ever had was four. But four. <laughs> yeah. What's the, that must be because that's what I don't know. It's like um, even like driving like on motorways for me, oh, yeah. and then you're going around like sharp roads. Yeah. You get people right next to you. I always get a little bit like fuck me if old mate decides to just you know yeah. we're gonna we're gonna end off the road. So what's yeah. it like having like three cars next to you? Well, you, like? all, you, all, well, you hope that they're good at racing and they can fucking stick to their line and you mm. know, go around the corner. You do it again at the next corner. Would shit ever fucking go down? Like people go around the corners and like oh yeah, like flipping yeah yeah, yeah right. It happens all the time. It's just part of it. It's fun. We have mm. a beer in the club rooms afterwards. It's all good. Yeah. Anyone get really fucked up or anything? Or? Oh, yeah. I've seen some deaths as well. Oh, God. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it, it it, comes, I know it, it, it kind of comes with it, eh? yeah. but it's, um, yeah, that can be pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. I'd imagine yeah. just like part of those extreme sports. Yeah. 
Mm. But yeah. that, but those deaths are normally in the higher up classes, like super stocks with their big V eight engines in there. Ah, uh, of course. Ah, oh, because they probably get on fire, the light on fire, like get on fire or something. Like well, some that. of them do, but I think some of them just hit the wall a bit on a funny angle and. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I haven't seen too much in like yeah those uh, speedways, but I've seen like the Formula One. Yeah, that that is like looks like the most scary shit oh, I've ever I could seen. Oh, do that, eh? Hey? <laughs> it's so fast. Make Turn your car light like... as possible, and if you just nick something, or even like your tires touch together, just... like another car, it just boop, like, yeah. flips, and the whole so thing great. fucking breaks. Yeah. Cause those cars are worth like what millions, eh? Yeah, millions. And millions. I mean, my production is something I paid five thousand dollars for, so it's nothing, mm. nothing big. But then there's like super stocks that cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for you. Don't win any money if you win. You're just going out there just to have a this hobby. Mm. So it's yeah. just fun shit. Yeah. No, I, I I understand that. Yeah, racing is like um, because like with music, like if you want to make money, and yeah. by make money, let's say play a gig and you break even and make some money on yeah. it. Um, I would say like you're not making a lot, but I'd say you know you get like a reasonable crowd along. You can probably yeah. make a if you sell some merch, do all that stuff. But racing. Fuck man, to make money in that is like it's, you have to spend big money. To you make have money. to spend so yeah. much money to even be able to maybe make money. <laughs> yeah, it's just just too much, too much money that goes involved in it. You got to have a team and yeah. and everything as well. Like um, yeah, because everybody who pretty much does it like obviously comes from wealthy, yeah, wealthy backgrounds to do it. Um, mostly business owners do all the the high class mm. stuff as well. It's like okay, these guys like own a big huge business and they're going out there smashing and crashing every week. And then well, they yeah. go they go back to work on Monday. <laughs> Yeah, I remember one of my, my my dad used to work with a guy who had like a, uh, a Fiat and it was fucking quick as shit. He'd take it to like, um, oh, I can't remember, not Hampton Downs, but something like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it would like just go, but he just, yeah, work the whole week, work on the car and then yeah. take it to the track. But he would spend a fortune on this Fiat. Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> it's just a Fiat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a Fiat. But I'm just like... Not just because of a hobby, but I'm like, man, like if, yeah, like back to the making money or yeah. like, oh, I want to try and pursue this. Like, yeah. unless you've got like family wealth, I'd, is, it, is it even possible nah. for drivers to like figure out a way to? Nah, not if, no, well, you can if you want to get them like the really low class things like production mm. saloons, because like I said, $5,000 would probably be a top. Mm. But everything, anything after that, it's just like, hmm, I guess you need one lot or something. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. Because I imagine there's a lot of talented drivers. Oh, yeah. A lot of skills. Absolutely. But then just can't do shit. Yeah. I mean, money. That's one of my guys, one of my friends who used to race. He was really good. Like, one of the best I've ever seen. Didn't have any money. Couldn't buy any fancy car. Mm. And then you have to try and get sponsors and everything else, but they won't do it unless you... You already have a reputation or you've yeah. got a team or... Yeah. It's just like, oh. Because even to have a team, like, you got to have, like, how many... you got to have how many engineers and yeah i mean i don't really know them i don't watch formula one or anything like that my, my, my car knowledge is pretty average yeah but um just from what i gather like you probably gotta have a team of like what four or five like yeah. a manager and then you gotta have yeah. people to you know if your car gets fucked during the race you yeah have people to quickly fix it and then if it's fucked and then overnight actually one of my mates he used to what did he do he um I was at uni he used to do like the formula oh uh, can't remember, but he just told me a story like a part of the team there when they would go and race and the car would get fucked and they had to spend all night yeah. fixing it, getting ready, like just like you're no sleep it's for the race the next crazy. day. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and you still don't win any money out of it. Mm. Which is you lose money out of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but it's all for fun, I suppose. Yeah. I get that. But it's I definitely racing because I used to think music because music can be is can be pricey. Yeah. But then I looked at racing and I'm like, oh, Okay, yeah. this is but this is this, super this, cheaper this, now. Okay, this is cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crack up. Oh, yeah. sweet as. Um, so, um, what else was I gonna ask you? So, yeah, the music stuff. So, pushing that up now to maybe Auckland. What venue would you would you would you reckon? Oh God, there's been a few of them. I mean, I miss the King's Arms. Ah, oh, amen to that, man. It sucks. It's probably Whammy. I like Whammy a lot. You like Whammy? Yeah. I feel it, it reminds me so much of Yellow Submarine being un, being underground. There's the pillars there as well, which was what well, Yellow Submarine had, but, mm. it was, but there was a bit more pillars, and we used to mosh into them. Mosh into the pillars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I remember at um, 
Yeah, there's a, a venue out in Newland called UFO. Have you ever yeah. been oh, there no. before? I've heard, of, I've heard of it, but yeah. yeah, I've talked a little bit of shit about that venue before. But um, <laughs> they had a, like a big pillar in the middle, oh, and no. people would climb up and jump off and stuff, and it was like it was fun as. Yeah. But yeah, they like like those underground sort of shows for sure. Oh yeah, Whammy Bar, Whammy Bar is pretty cool. I've actually yeah. never been to Wine Cellar. I still haven't actually oh, been wow. there. I went there not too long ago for a Mice on Stilts gig when they had the album release party. It was a bloody good venue. Good venue? Good yeah. sound in that? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a punk rock or anything. Mm. It was more of a slow jammy type shit, but mm. yeah, it was good sound for that. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Some of those little venues that can be really hit and miss with like, also the genre. Like yeah. sometimes, yeah. If I see like a slow jam band and like whammy, I personally don't think it works. No. Um... But then if you have like, uh, I'm trying to think of like a slightly, yeah. I mean, most like hardcore metal punk, you can probably put it in most places. Yeah. I think maybe if it's a bit of a haul, maybe, or, mm, I don't know. I think it depends. I remember yeah. we did a gig at um, All Ages years ago at, uh, what was it called? Freedom's Bay, uh, uh, Freeman's Bay Community Center. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a big gas community center and... Um, it was just a bit too big. Oh yep. <laughs> um, like, well, oh yeah, we'll see who comes along. Like, like fifty people it was fine, yeah. but I was like, this is too big. Yeah. And like, um, because like we had the it was a good PA we had in that and a sound guy, but everything it just <laughs> I had a recording at the back. I'm like, oh, it's just so much echo and yeah. reverb. Like, yeah, it's not a good place to be. <laughs> it's like when we had um Bridge City beat down at the Meteor in Hamilton. The Meteor was huge, and we still sold out technically. There was heaps of space left for people. Mm. but because of the facilities you can't sell any more tickets legally but mm. that was just the same it was massive there was a bit of reverb around and yeah it was kind of weird yeah it could kind of like throw off the feel a little yeah. bit i think yeah especially like doing like yeah the punk hardcore yeah. or like metal bands or anything like that um mm, mm. Mm. uh what what are you do you have any plans in terms of um hmm, like do you want to just stay kind of in the the punk rock metal stuff, or yeah, are you gonna definitely. branch out to try a few other little genre organization I mean, for, for gigs? Or for the Doug Fest, the main festival, definitely mm. punk and metal because mm. it just seems what it's what I like. Yeah, yeah, sure. But if it, I mean, I've been talking to some other artists to doing some smaller stuff outside Auckland, like Hamilton, maybe Taupo, maybe Wellington. Mm. And it's kind of like more of a know, like a dirty pop type of sound, the hyper pop stuff. No, nah, yeah, it's, like nah, it's a bit like sex music type oh, yeah. <laughs> sex music yeah like this true, is true. this is artist called Vana so she's originally from America moved over here mm. did some uh, music with like Semper and everyone else and went back to America has done a big huge tour over there now and then she's going to come back soon we're trying to think of to do something hopefully yep. next year that'd yeah. be cool yeah she's pretty decent mm. yeah I can imagine that uh, they're trying to get internationals to do those like it's hard <laughs> it'd be hard but i think there's i think there's appreciation if you get uh, uh international or someone foreign on like a local music yeah gig. um yeah i had john F uh, folding on and he played in a band called the night gorns and they called oh, a bit yeah, of the yeah. states and that and he said he just played these like real out of it gigs yeah um, i think he played 94 gilman as well didn't he he did yeah yeah, yeah he played that but bitch. yeah it looks fucking cool as shit <laughs> that'd be so fun but like he played all these like backyard gigs and yeah. that and i'm like yeah that's the shit but like that's when you actually get to properly connect with people yeah. and make fans yeah in a and i think that's a really cool way of doing it i mean obviously yes doing circuits and the bars and normal yeah. venues is cool but I reckon those gigs, you really get to connect with people yeah, exactly, a bit more yeah. and have a bit more like a personal yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I haven't played a backyard gig in fucking God, I miss it, man. I haven't been to one since I was a teenager, but we had heaps of them in Hamilton, though. Oh, I bet. Oh, was down River Road was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those, like, those walls, crazy shit. Those walls could tell so many stories. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah, in Auckland, it's hard to do it. I mean, as you're like out west, like Waitakere's and that, the Waitakere yeah. Rangers, they have like a few... I never, I heard about them. I never really went to them. Yeah. I went to like a, made like a youth center. Like, oh, the Zeal in Hamilton as well. Yeah. So I used to do the Zeal in Auckland. Um, there's some, there's some international acts there. That was really funny. Like Yellow yeah. Card play there and like a few other random yeah. bands. And I'm like, wow, you're playing Zeal. <laughs> like, so, that's funny. I think I remember like, that cool. as well. Yeah. So I think maybe Jared Ibsen was the promoter back at Zeal back in the day. I don't know. Okay. He I didn't really know the guys okay. who were um, organizing it. I just yeah. kind of would go along. I practice there and whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, it's still going, so yeah. I hope it's still fucking thriving. Fingers crossed. 
I mean, it's still there when I'm going it's down still there. Yeah. It's still there. I haven't yeah, been yeah. there ever, <laughs> except for that one Yoko group, but yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, sweet as, man. Um, so, have you got uh, anything else sort of going on at the moment in terms of like organization or? Still in the planning stages, but definitely thinking about doing something in Auckland in late February. Mm. I'm going to have a talk with Whammy tonight and see what happens and yeah. Should be good, like a little Dugfest Junior. Get five, Dugfest Junior? Yeah. <laughs> That's get, cool. get three Dugfest bands and then two other ones that I haven't heard of before. Mm. I want to see live and see how it goes. And fingers crossed it might actually work out. I think so. I think so. Well, let me know about it, bro. I'd love to come along. Thank it looks you. fun as. I look like that, yeah, that Dugfest photos. I'm like, that looks fun. Well, that looks fun. That's, I'm still waiting for some of the photos as well because I haven't seen them all. Mm. It looks like a real welcoming, like, nice place to be oh, as it well. Is. It like, is. I think. That sometimes with gigs, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, have, I felt when I go some places, I'm like, mm, this isn't, yeah. doesn't feel like, I'm, I'm happy to be here to check out some stuff, but I don't feel like... It doesn't feel homely. Homely or yeah. welcomed and it feels a bit stiff or, yeah, yeah, maybe it's an Auckland thing as well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, Hamilton's great. Hamilton music scene used to be fucking amazing back in like 2000s, 2010s, mm. and then it obviously died down COVID, and it's... It's coming back to it now. That uh, Dugfest reminded me so much of Yellow Submarine and how everyone was trying to be friends with everyone else, mm. which is fucking mean. That's what you want, though. You want to push yeah. people up, ideally. Yeah. You know, it's like... I always find that weird. Uh, I talked to Scotty uh, when Scotty was on from the Boondocks and yeah. we talked about... Um, find it kind of weird when you get people who, like, uh, don't want to help, uh, I, I guess, not just be friends, but people who are like, oh, they're kind of a bit standoffish. They yeah. don't want to connect or they're sort of yeah. a bit like oh fuck that um i'm like it's a real small scene for one yeah. people will probably figure out who you are and then um it's like i don't know it's it's a weird thing to do in like a local music scene yeah it's like how hot do you think you are <laughs> <laughs> i mean someone that has also put down the shyness as well that probably would have been me a year ago just oh, okay. filling up the background i don't know any of these people i'm gonna stand here and just be by myself but Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. But I think it's just like there'd be bands I have met who I will not name who I who think they are quite important. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> just just you're, you're, you're the same standard as everyone else. Just yeah, yeah. Same stage. Just go out there and have fun and make friends. Mm, yeah. I think just got to like chill out a little bit more. It's also yeah. the tall poppy syndrome I think oh, we've yeah. got. Yep. We do love our tall poppy syndrome in New Zealand. We definitely do. <laughs> Oh, sweet, dude. I think um might round it off a little bit, yeah. and I might give you a few uh, quick fires. Yeah, let's just, let's just fucking see how we go. All right, first things first, Mac or PC? What PC. PC? Always. Why PC? Because it's much easier for me to work with. <laughs> so if you, oh, I've used a bit of Linux as well, but we won't talk about that. My good Linux. Damn. Yeah, I've got a computer degree. I just haven't done nothing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, like, built a computer and shit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking cool. Yeah. I remember I tried to build a computer and I fucking fucked it up. I'm um, yeah, I'm like I, I'm always like yeah, I can do like DIY shit, all right, and then I'll be like oh maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it was t- I mean Google helped. Yeah, that's yeah. true. If you can get like yeah, figure that out. Oh, good on, good on, mm. nice, nice. Um, local band, right? Uh, local. Let's go Auckland. We're in Auckland. What's a local Auckland Auckland band you've been listening to at the moment? Oh, you've been enjoying? Be pretty biased here though, but Stray Dogs. Stray Dogs. Yeah. I mean, I saw them when they were their last band play. Uh, open up for Hawthorne Heights, uh, uh, King's Arms. Damn, that's just going. Oh, up. that's a throwback. <laughs> that is, yeah. And ever since then, I just like, yeah, I love these guys. And then yeah. they changed their name to Stray Dogs, and I'm like, cool, this is gonna be fucking sick. And they were sick live. I'll check them out. What, what do they sort of do? Uh, so it's pop, pop, uh, pop punk. Pop punk. So yeah, Stray Dogs. Okay, I'll check yeah. them out. I'll check them out. Um, all right. Um, let me think of another one. Uh, what is uh. If you're stranded on a desert island and you only had one thing you could bring bring with you, what would it be? God. <laughs> That's a hard question. You, you, bring, you bring God? No, sure. No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Probably some, just a bottle of whiskey. Fuck it. Bottle of whiskey? Yeah. If we're going to be, if we're gonna be out there doing yeah. nothing, might as well have some fun while I'm doing it. See, just see it out. Yeah. Yeah. May as well enjoy it. Exactly. It reminds, I know for some reason it reminds me of the scene in, um, is that Walking Dead where like he just ends up lighting a joint when he gets killed by heaps of zombies or some shit? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll probably do that as well, but yeah. I yeah. don't want to criminate myself too much here. <laughs> <laughs> Our own New Zealand, bro. I don't think yeah. it matters with that stuff. <laughs> the weed. Um, was it fifty one forty nine or something in like that uh in the voting or whatever? Yeah, something stupid like that. And like I need that. like sixty five percent or 
That was stupid. That was stupid. But anyway, we can say that for another topic. Um, <laughs> what 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 else have I got? What else have I got? Okay. Um, pr- since we were, oh, were talking about music before music production, favorite plugin. Oh God. Favorite plugin. Definitely not sausage fattener. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> What's sausage fat? Though? Sausage fat just makes everything awesome. sound fucking fat. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just like it's just a. I think it's it's a, also called um. What are they called? Uh, there's a name for it. Oh my god, my audio knowledge is is oh, lacking same. right now. It's um. I remember I used one in the studio. Anyway, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything but that. Anything but that. Yep. What would you in your production experience? What would you say was like um, I guess like a mixing technique that you it you realized was like um something that could that uh was maybe underrated that you i don't know like some like i don't know maybe eqing or i don't know compressing or you did something you were like oh, i i do this on every track and no one seems to really talk about how important it is to apply x or something so the best thing i ever did was use different speakers different headphones take take the mix to your car listen to it through your car mm. go through like your phone see if it sounds okay through that and then Go through some high end headphones if it sounds good for all of them. Fuck yeah, mm. that's pretty much the only thing I. Oh yeah, really took yeah. It's not like a mastering thing because you, you did yeah. master, you did yeah, mastering as well. Yeah, mastering mainly mixing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't. I'm not very good at mixing. <laughs> I'm good at. I, I like. I love recording. Recording yeah. sick. Mixing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of faff. Yeah, um, if I had something else. Uh, all right. If you okay before you go to a gig, what are you? What are you eating? What's a what's oh, a what's a, a burger? A burger? Yeah, if it's that last place, a double smash with jalapenos. I mean, I've got that tattooed on my leg because it's such a good burger. Yeah, and also smash also, burgers have taken off. It's oh, become a real so thing. Good. It's become a real thing. So good. I see, yeah, probably burger. Burger? Yeah. What would you not eat? <laughs> I mean, lactose intolerance. So anything with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's gassing up the venue. Yeah, it would be the worst thing. Everyone's gonna look at you going, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that for sure, for sure. Uh, all right. I think yeah. that's all I've got. Um, is there anything yeah. you sort of want to promote or you want to, uh, sort of say to the people who might be listening? <laughs> uh, it depends when this comes out really, but I'll be um, next, uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. There could be a Doug Fest Jr. happening at, uh, Auckland. Ooh. At end of February. Yo. Um, Doug Fest 2 is going to be a labor weekend next year, um, at Last Place Bar and check us out on Doug Fest or, uh, bleh, on Instagram at dogfest underscore nz awesome oh, yeah. sweet man yeah thanks for coming on bro i really appreciate it great okay. meeting you in that cheers. and um yeah wish you luck with all the future events mean as sweet as cheers. thanks everyone listening bye bye